we'll review what it means to determine what the inverse of a function is. So remember, an inverse is, let's just get a different color pen here. The inverse happens when we take all of the x values and turn them into y values, and take all of the y values and turn them into x values. So that's really what an inverse is, is when x becomes y and y becomes x. And so if we were given an equation like this, y equals 2x plus 3, and we wanted to find the inverse of that function, then I would simply say, okay, here's a y value, I'll make that an x. Here's an x value, I'll make that a y. And this would be the inverse of this function. And usually what we would then do is we would isolate y. So I'm going to minus 3 from both sides here. x minus 3 equals 2y. And then we'll divide by 2 and get this. Or I could write it like this on this side. So y is equal to x minus 3 over 2. And so this function up here and this function down here are inverses of each other. And sometimes in s to show that we're finding the inverse, we express it like this. f minus 1 of x equals x minus 3 over 2. So this little negative 1 up here, it doesn't mean reciprocal, it means inverse. It means x and y were switched from the original function. Here's another example. y equals x minus 3 divided by x. So here's a y value. I'm going to turn that into x. Here's an x value. I'll turn that into y. Here's another x value. I'll turn that into y. So I've done the switch of x and y. Now I need to isolate y. So I'll multiply both sides by y here. So that gives me xy on the left side equals y minus 3. Now I'm trying to isolate y, so what I'll do is I'll get all my y terms on one side. So I'll bring this y over here. It's now xy minus y equals negative 3. And then I'll factor the y out, because there's a common factor of y here. This is usually the part where students have trouble with, not knowing how to get y out. Well, factoring, because there's a common factor of y here and here. So if we take the y out, that leaves us with x minus 1. So taking the y out of there is x, dividing that by y is, is 1. And then to isolate y, we can divide by x minus 1. So the inverse of this function is negative 3 over x minus 1. That would represent the, the inverse. If we were given a graphical representation of a, of a function, so let's say here's our, our graph of some function here, and I've put a couple of points on here. Let's assume that each tick mark is worth 1. So this would be the point 1, 5, 0, 3, negative 3, 1, negative 5, 0, and negative 6, negative 3. So these would be some key points that are on this sketch here. So again, if we wanted to draw the inverse of this, we would simply switch their x and y values. So this was x and this is y. So my new point is going to be negative 3, negative 6, right here. This point that was negative 5, 0 is now 0, minus 5. This point that's negative 3, 1 is now 1, minus 3. Whoop. And this point here used to be 0, 3. Now it's 3, 0. And this point was 1, 5. Now it's 5, 1. And so we get a graph that's kind of, try to draw a little smooth curve through here if I can. We get a graph that looks like this. And so this here would represent the inverse of this function that we started with here. And then remember what we have, if we have a graphical picture, when you have the original function here, the inverse is the graph that you would get if you reflected about the line y equals x. And you can see if we take this graph here and reflect it over to here, 
that this line would, would be a mirror image of that line. So graphically, the inverse is the graph you would get when you reflected about the line y equals x. And we can generate that graph simply by flipping the coordinates of the points around. Now, if we were to alter this graph a little bit, I don't know if I could do this without erasing the whole line. Good. Good. And um, so if we take a look at this black graph here, let's call this y equals f of x. It's our original graph. If we look at the domain of it, the domain of this function goes from negative 6 to positive 1. So negative 6 to positive 1. And its range would be from a y value of negative 3 to a y value of 5. So there's the domain and range of the original function f of x. If we take a look at this one, And let's say we ended the graph here, just like where that one ended. And we ended the graph. I think this is going to erase the whole thing. Yep. So there we go. Let's end this graph where that one ends. If we take a look at the domain and range of the inverse. So here, the domain would be from negative 3 to 5. And its range would be from negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so negative 6 all the way up to 1. Now, since the inverse is x and y switched, maybe it's no surprise to you that the domain, the x values of the original function, become the range, the y values of the inverse. And the range of the original function y equals f of x now become the domain of the inverse. So the domain and range of the inverse functions will be opposite to what the domain and range were of the original function. They're simply switched. So just, just one other point about inverse of functions that I want to, want to mention in this little video. Here's a graph. It's actually the graph y equals x squared. Um, and you're familiar with that one. Remember, we, we can tell that this is a function because it passes a vertical line test. That should be something you remember too. When I draw a vertical line, it passes this graph in only one place. And remember, a function is, is uh, defined to be a relation where for every x value, there's only one y value. So if I look at the x value here of 2, there's only one y value on the graph. That's what we really mean by passing a vertical line test. So what if I said to you, given this function right here, y equals x squared, would the inverse of this thing be a function? Well, one way would be to graph the inverse of that, and let's do that. Let's get a um, red one here. And so if I flip some of these points around, you're going to see that the graph would end up looking like this. There's a quick rough sketch of it. And so this would be the inverse. This would be the inverse function to y equals x squared. And is this graph a function? No, it's not. It doesn't pass a vertical line test. When x is 2, I get two different y values right here. So this is not a function. But I could tell, I could tell easily enough by looking at the original function because the original function does not pass a horizontal line test. So drawing a line through the original function y equals x squared does not pass a horizontal line test. So then I know that the inverse would not pass a vertical line test. Because remember, the inverse is just opposites. So this would be like, for example, this is the line here, y equals 4. y equals 4 intersects the graph twice. So in the inverse, x equals 4, it must intersect the inverse function twice. So given an original function, if it doesn't pass a horizontal line test, you know that the inverse will not pass a vertical line test. Therefore, the inverse would not be a function. So there's just some review of some concepts about finding inverses of functions.